Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and what I want to do in this video is break down what are the licenses for the big three when it comes to game development engines. So I'm going to be showing Game Maker Studio 2, Unity, and Unreal Engine. Now, I use Game Maker Studio, and that's what I love, and that's what I teach on, but I do want to give it a as fair as possible breakdown for each one so that you can make a decision on which one you should use based purely on a budget. If you already have a preference or a coding language that you know, then this probably won't matter as much, but if you're looking to get started or you're just curious which one has the best pricing, then I think this will be really informative. We're going to start off with Game Maker Studio. So here they have four different options. And if you don't know how that works, then it can be a little confusing. Well, I guess they have five, technically. You have a trial version, which is completely free. It has a lot of limitations, so you can only have a few resources in there, and you can't actually build your game to share it with people. So it's a great one to get started with, but if you actually want to make a game, you have to buy something. And that's where Creator comes in. So it starts at $39, and you buy it for Windows or Mac, because that's where you're allowed to then build a game for. You can use Game Maker Studio on any OS, it doesn't matter, but if you have a Windows one, you can only build a Windows game, and if you have a Mac, you can only build a Mac compatible game. That's how that works. It's $39 and it is a 12 month license. It's not a permanent purchase. So if you wanna try it out, this is a really great way to do it, to have access to everything and be able to build your game. You cannot change your splash screen, and that's something that's really important to a lot of people, so just keep that in mind if you're going with this option. Now, there is also Developer, which has several different options inside of here. The desktop license gives you access to publishing to the desktop, and that allows you to make uh, games for Windows and Mac, and that is a $99 permanent license. All of these ones inside of here, the developer licenses, are all permanent, so you will own them forever, you'll get the upgrades, and that's really, really nice. If you want to purchase to the Amazon app marketplace, you can do that. You have web, mobile, and UWP, which is for uh, Xbox or for Xbox and Windows 10. The Xbox goes specifically through the creators program, but you can do that, and that costs up to $3.99. Uh, but all of these are permanent, so once again, you will own them forever, which is really nice. Now, if you want to purchase console licenses, then you can come down here, and uh, the first one they show is the UWP, which we already talked about, and that one is kind of the outlier, because it has a permanent license, and it is significantly cheaper. Now, if you want to purchase uh, a license to be able to publish to the Switch, PS4, or Xbox, those are going to run you $800 a for a year and a 12 month license. So you have to renew it and it is not subscription based. So they're not gonna charge you $800 at the end of your uh, one year usage like a lot of companies will get you to sign up for it and then auto charge you and that's how they make their money. This isn't like that. You pay for 12 months and then you have to go in and buy it again. Now the last one here is $1,500 but Ultimate is for everything so it includes every single place that you can possibly publish it. So developer and console, all for $1,500, and that's a 12-month license. Now, I've heard a lot of people complain about this 12-month license thing. They want to be able to own this forever. But the thing is that this is actually a pretty good deal. If you know that you want to publish to one location, like Nintendo Switch, and that's what you want to do, this is actually going to be the best price that you can get, depending on how well your game does. So the license is so that they can continue to make money and they continue to put out new features because Nintendo Switch was actually added, what, in the last year, I think? And that is partly because people keep giving them money to be able to make games. That's just how that works. They're no different than Unity, which is what we're gonna look at next. Oh, the last one here is education, but that's not really for uh, just individuals, but if you have a school system, you can get education pricing, which is really cool. Now, Unity here uh, seems like a really good deal. Now, uh, they have a personal plan, which is completely free. You get access to the software, everything that it has. You don't get like support, uh, but you still get access to their marketplace, their software, and you can go and learn on your own. 
and you get that all for free. Now the caveat here is that you cannot make more than $100,000 per year. If you do, then you must upgrade. If you make more than 100000 then you have to move to plus. And that is going to be $25 for a, per month for a year, or $35 if you're just paying monthly. But the thing is that if you're making more than that, you must have this plus. If you're making more than 200000 then you must move to the pro, which is going to be $1,500 a year. And that is per developer. So if you have a team of 10, that's going to be $15,000 per year that you want to have access to your game once it starts making a good chunk of money. So that's kind of Unity. It's a little confusing because their brackets are within uh, tiers. So less than 100,000, between 100 and 200,000, and then greater than 200,000. But the nice thing is that you can get in with personal and you can make a game. It's really cool. But again, personal doesn't allow you to change the splash image, kind of like on Game Maker Studio. So if that's important to you, you will need to go and upgrade, I believe, to the Pro, but the Plus might also have that. So keep that in mind as well, if that's something that's important to you. Then we move on to Unreal, which definitely has the best looking page. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can find their pricing. So Unreal is completely free, except for once you start making money. After you make $3,000 gross revenue in a year, you have to pay 5% from then on. So gross revenue is the total amount of money that you make. That means if you publish on Steam, Steam is going to take 30% of that $10 price or that $20 price or whatever you put, but you have to pay off of that full $10, not the $7 that you actually get in revenue. And that's important to keep in mind. So you're actually losing 35% if you're publishing on Steam if you use Unreal. And if you're not making a large game or you're not making more than $3,000 in a year, then Unreal is completely free and really powerful and a great option. But I imagine if you're making a game, you're hoping to actually make more than $3,000 in a year as that is extremely low. But what I want to do next is actually do kind of a breakdown of average sales and kind of do a little bit of math here, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit of drawing on here. Now, this is really, really low estimates. The average indie sales uh, that I've read are kind of hard to pin down because of games that do really well and games that don't do really well. They're all mixed in there as an average. What I read was around 21,000, but that number was supposed to be inflated. So I'm going to go with a much, much lower number that I think you can expect for your first game if you make a good quality game and you put it out there and do a little bit of advertising. Not even paid, just word of mouth on Twitter, social media, stuff like that. So I'm going to go with 4,000 sales in your first year. The average price for an indie game is like 872 or something. So again, I put that down to $8. So this is all lower on the estimate, very conservative. So the total that you'd get, your gross revenue is here, $32,000. Doesn't seem like much, and that's because it really isn't. Ma making uh, your way as a, as a game developer full-time is a really difficult thing to do. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Have a backup and have some money on the side that you can make. Uh, after a revenue cut from like Steam right here, so they take 30%, what you're actually making is 22400 Now, every place that you publish is going to be different. Unreal just uh, launched their new store, and I believe they have a much less rev revenue cut. I don't know what it is. I want to say it's like 15 maybe 20%. They're trying really hard to get into the game sales, so they're undercutting Steam, which is, you know, the big one. And so that might be a better place to publish if you're starting out, you'll take home more. But the thing to remember is that this right here is the gross revenue. So what you're going to pay on is that. So let's look at Unity with those numbers in mind. If you're making under 100000 that's totally fine. You're not going to have to pay for anything. Again, you can't change the splash screen, but that's okay. If you're fine with that, uh, no problem. If your game started doing a lot better, then you'd have to pay for plus, and that would be $300 a year per developer. 
So that's really not that bad. Uh, as far as licensing goes, that's pretty cheap if you are a one person studio. Now, if you have a team of 10, you know, that's gonna add up. Uh, but at that point, I don't know how much of an indie developer you are, maybe an independent team, but you probably have more of a budget than a one person team. So keep that in mind. After you make uh, 200,000, so you have to go pro with that. And that pro is gonna be 125 a month and 1500 a year, again, per developer. So if your game is pretty low, then you're fine. Unity is a great option. Unreal Engine seems really great at first, but once you start making more, they actually take a lot. So uh, I love Unreal, I've used it, but I think their model is kind of deceptive because you don't realize how much you're actually gonna pay them. But it is a really great engine, I'll, t I'll just say that. So if you make less than 3,000 in a year, you don't pay at all. In our scheme, you are making more. So if you made 32,000 that year, you have to pay those royalties, okay? 5% goes to Unreal, that's $1,600. Because again, that 5% is gonna come right out of your gross revenue. So that 32,000 you made, you're losing, if you're publishing on Steam, as of right now, you're losing about 35% overall, which is kind of normal. So after all that, you take home $20,000. Not enough to live off of in most places. Game Maker Studio, uh, it, it's kind of hard to pin down, but if you were just publishing to Steam, you can buy the license for $99, and that's a permanent license that you get to keep, and that would be all you have to pay if you're doing just on Steam. If you're going for one console, then it would be $800 for that year, and if you're publishing on multiple consoles, then it would be $1,500. Now, these are all very conservative. Let's go and bump it up to say your game did really quite well. Let's say you, you sold 20,000 copies in your first year at $8 a copy. So overall, you just made $160,000 in gross revenue and gross profit. That's pretty good. So Unity again here is going to be $300 a year per person. That's not too bad. Unreal is going to cost a lot more. It's going to be $8,000 for that year. And every year afterwards that your game is making more than $3,000, that's how much it's, it's going to be changing, obviously. But as long as your game is making more than $3,000, you will be paying Unreal. Uh, Unity and Game Maker Studio, which we'll get to next, you don't have to keep paying them. If your game was complete and done and there were no errors whatsoever and you never had to touch it again, then you don't have to keep paying to do that. You could just let your game live and you don't have to pay Unity or GMS, but Unreal will continue costing. GMS, at the most, is gonna cost you $1,500 a year per person. That's if you wanted to publish desktop, web, and PS4, Xbox, Switch, all of them, you could buy the Ultimate and get $1,500. If you were just doing Steam, it would cost you $99. If you were just doing one console, it would be $800 per year per person. Now, let's bump that up. What if you did like Stardew Valley level of sales, okay? This game was an indie hit. You've probably heard it, if not played it. I know I've sunk a lot of hours into it myself. And I've actually bought it more than once because it's on the Switch now and it's a lot of fun. So they sold over 3 million copies. This is one of those games that, as far as indie devs go, is, you know, a super big outlier. You can't expect this, but I think as game developers, we hope for that, right? We want to hope that our game does well like this. Now, it's priced at $15. And overall, I was actually really surprised at this. $45 million in gross revenue. Uh, that's over the course of its life. Uh, I heard that he spent about four years doing it by himself, so I think that's a pretty good return on investment. Unity, again, is gonna be really good here. $1,500 a year, so that's not too bad. Unreal, on the other hand, and this is why I think it's kind of deceptive, is gonna end up costing, over the course of its life, $2.25 million that 5% really starts adding up, okay? So keep that in mind. If your game is gonna do really, really well, 
well, you'll have the money to pay that cost, and it comes in only as your game is doing well, but that still, obviously, is a lot more. If you were doing just GMS, it'd be $1,500 a year, because he's got Stardew Valley on every single platform, except, I think, web and mobile, but I bet mobile will change in the future, too, because it could be really good on mobile if you got the right UI. So, Unity and GMS, I think, come out on top here if you want to publish it everywhere. Unreal is great, but it's going to cost you a lot once your game starts doing well. So keep that in mind. So that's what I have for you. Uh, I hope that helps. I hope that it kind of gives you an idea of what the licenses are, how they work, and which one might be right for you. Because depending on where you're going and what you want to do, where you want to publish your game, there are a lot of different options. So that's what I've got for you. Thanks very much for joining me. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If I made any mistakes or things have been changed since I last put this out, definitely put some comments out there and I will pin those to the top to make sure we've got the most relevant information possible. Thank you very much for joining me. And as I always say, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. Hey there, it's Aaron. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, I encourage you to check out my Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and get access to our Discord channel and be able to vote on the next series that I tackle. You'll also be able to do one-on-one -on -one training sessions for $10 a month or more if you want more time with me. We can work on whatever it is you're struggling with, and I can help you make that awesome game or project. You'll also get access to my courses. Every time I publish a new course on Udemy or Skillshare, every one of my patrons gets that course for free. So even if you support me for just $1 a month, that's a great steal because I'm going to be putting out a lot more courses this year. I want to do YouTube, Udemy, teaching, game development full-time, and you can help make that happen. So... Thank you very much. I hope you'll check out my Patreon and consider supporting me on there. And check out my courses on Udemy and Skillshare if you're wanting more content from me. Have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.